من شیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم اتی الله تی رسول و امر امری منکم و الله هو الحی انا حی و یقیوم 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 الله حي يا قيوم يا رب العرش العظيم أي ماذا لكم من نظركم من عبد الله جيسة ضعيفة مسكين زعلم الجهنبة في the grace of Allah that we are still in existence الحمد لله that Allah زوجان markets to all his creation and الحمد لله that in this world of media and sight and sound and the importance of sight and sound that people of tafakkur they seek Allah's treasure in everything. And if you've ever gone treasure hunting or gold hunting they would take the kids to these amusement parks that what you catch in this bucket and you begin to sift means that the garbage that you don't want let it fall and see if that what you collect if you can find any treasure in something. Means there must be hikmah in most things unless it's outright satanic and that's the hikmah right there that that's satanic. So there must be a, a wisdom, a guidance for creation and understanding isharat. So it's the seeker that has a heart in which to sift out and the one whom is immediately judgmental and what we call square-headed they seek out nothing. They see no treasure in anything except trying to point out the obvious and that's not the path. That's not the path nor the character Allah wants on this path the character of humility in which Ya Rabbi Ana faqir billahi ta'ala that Allah Zawajal huwa al-qani and Allah Zawajal is the rich and majestic and I'm just a, a poor servant Ya Rabbi. You are the knower and I know nothing. That keeping our, our way of humility so that Allah Zawajal allows us to have the humility and shyness to find a reality within something, to point out and pick out its treasures. And for people whom are trying to seek and trying to awaken there are many hearts that are also trying to awaken and wake up people. And with the understanding of the movie The Matrix it's important to understand that these are deep tariqah realities. That this dunya is but an illusion and that's what the concept of The Matrix is. Allah has declared, this life of yours, this dunya is an illusion and it's not real, it's a playground. And as a result of the illusion shaitan comes and makes it a delusion. He wants us to believe that this temporary fake existence is all that you should be striving for. Your whole purpose of life and all your time in life should be striving for the illusion which is delusional. And tariqahs come to teach the balance, to come and teach that, no, no, this life is an illusion and you must break all of its delusions, you must break all of its… its it's grabbing upon you but not to the extent to insult Allah right? So they don't curse it because they have existence, they have health, they have rizq, they have families. But to understand that Ya Rabbi from what you created of this earth and its beauty and its allurements that you are supreme and that the heavens are supreme. And my goal is to move towards your heavens and let your dunya to serve me and me not to be a servant of your dunya. So that becomes the tariqah, that is the reality and they find it in the hadiths of Sayyidina Umar describing when they asked about dunya. So you find it everywhere in Islam 
but square headed people they want some specific verse naming the matrix. So what, 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 what is that? One is an Arabic Qur'an and the other terms are English understandings. But Allah has mentioned everything in Qur'an. So when Allah wants to describe to you the matrix, Ayatul Kareem that this life is but an illusion. And that's the whole concept of this life is a matrix. It's a game, something's happening and you're not really seeing what this is about. And we come into this life and we become locked on this delusion. And we think that everything we're doing and trying to achieve and, and everything that we fear and we want in this world is real. And when the servant becomes guided by Allah and sends them to the guides, the first thing the guides are teaching them is, this is an illusion. Don't be a, a servant to this dunya but direct yourself to that which is eternal. And there's even hadith of Prophet I'm describing to the holy companions about running towards the sunlight or running away from the sunlight and trying to chase your, your shadow. So many of these things we have talked about, they are in Qur'an, they are in hadith and it's all about the path that we are seeking is run to the light, seek a path towards that which is eternal and the symbol of eternity is the sun. And Allah gave the isharat that if you want to understand eternity that sun has always been there. So seek a path in which you are continuously running towards the light and towards the heavens. Once the servant comes to guidance and calibrates their GPS that, I want that which is eternal. I want to run towards Allah I want to keep the love of Allah Then it becomes an understanding that if you want Allah's love, follow me, follow Sayyidina Muhammad That becomes all the teaching, that's why every month and every week and every day they're teaching about being ashiqeen, being from the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah created no man with two hearts, means there can be no two into the heart. This heart is for the love of Allah and the love of Allah is Allah's kingdom, right? So then in my heart has to be the love of Allah and the heaven kingdom, Nabiyeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin and that's all my heart should tolerate is Allah's kingdom. So I want to be with the love of Nabiyeen, the Siddiqeen, the, the truthful servants whom they are truthful in their deeds and in their actions. Means that not only what they say but their actions are truthful. Siddiqeen, shuhada, those whom they followed their hearts are open, Ahlul Basir. I want to eat with them, drink with them, be with them. As a result of those types of servants there are many salihin all around them because they see their deen is real, Allah has granted them sincerity. If we keep the association of people whom are not from mushahada, ahlul basira, then how are they going to be salihin around them? If what he did didn't open his heart and Allah didn't dress with rida and satisfaction, why would anyone around that person be dressed by satisfaction? So means that, that formula is the love that only Allah come and teach within our heart that is the direction of our lives. When we understand that then now the matrix makes more sense. We have to reach to the Promised Land, we have to reach to Allah's heavenly kingdom. We have to reach with this immense love and this immense ishq and that's what Allah is marketing through all of these different medias and, and things that are available for His creation. Is that you have to run and calibrate yourself that you have a love for the heavens, you have a love for Allah you have a love for Sayyidina Muhammad That is the supreme love, that is the supreme direction. Only through there will I get power, only through that connection and that reality will I receive a shifa and a healing and qudra and everything that I'm in need of. As a result of running in that direction the servant becomes with dressed by Allah's rida and satisfaction. 
That is then the reality of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alim nadeem. The hawla and quwwah, the, the, the help and the, the power is reaching to that servant to reach towards their reality. And that's what that whole series and that movie was about, is that are you going to live in this life, you know, either playing in it and lost completely to the illusion or running out of fear of shaitan in this illusion. Because now it's being governed where it's no longer any more playing. Before everybody was just you know playing and, and being lost with the illusion of dunya. Now it turned into a phase of the matrix where they're running now from the shaitans. Means everything the shaitan is instilling upon them of fear, of fear, of fear, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die. And that they're running from these shaitans until they hope that they can appease the shaitan and find a sense of peace with the shaitan so that they don't have to run anymore. But that, that is a servant who's lost within the matrix. And what's important in all of this is, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyun nadeem that Allah there is no help that can reach to you and there is no power that can be given to you if not uh, distributed by Allah When we say Azza, Allah Azza wa Jal, people are asking, what is Azza wa Jal? Azzati wa Jalalihi. That when we say Allah we have to say Allah the mighty, omnipotent and the, the powerful. You can't just say Allah Allah's name just by Allah, Izzati wa Jalalihi that by His might and His majesty anytime we mention the name of Allah means every qutra and every power has to be dressing upon the servant from Allah so that they have the madad, they have the help and they have the power that reaching to them. And that's what the matrix was understanding. All his life he's running, he's running and then one of the episodes they began to shoot him and shoot at him and then he decided to face the bullets, means face the fear. Imam Ali said that whatever your fate is in life, face it, where are you running to? Where are you going to run that you're going to be safe? Whatever is in front of you face your fate. And as soon as he looked and stood in the presence of those bullets they drop down and the code of Allah began to open. The binary code of one and zero, we even have that in the talks of Safa. And the, in the 18th, in the second month, the power of 18 in the binary code, that there's a binary code that is running this dunya and Allah describes all of this dunya has already been written. All the program has already been written. They asked Imam Ali, how is Allah now after creation? He said, Allah is as Allah has always been. All of this creation, all of its manifestations was but a second or epsilon of a second. It came into existence and it has gone from existence. Means it's already happened and we don't exist. We're giving ourselves a tremendous importance. And because we fall prey to the matrix, we fall into the deception and the delusion from shaitan that I have an importance, I have something I have to conquer, I have to be lost in this world, I have to master this world. And they come to remind us that. Whatever Allah is already been written, everything, every code has been written. The servant merely begins to apply themselves and fall within the software of Allah of whatever is written. For whatever Allah has written, can you achieve anything outside of that? Nothing. Can you have more than what Allah has written? Can you have less than what Allah has written? <coughs> those who want more kids, those who want more property, more money, more whatever it is that people want or fear, Allah has already written it. So what can happen to you? So it means that as we approach closer to the matrix and the understanding of decoding this reality, 
is by the love of Sayyidina Muhammad If you put all the teaching like a tasbih and you put all the beats together, he said that all this sakhar lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi That Allah says, I have bestowed all of that which is in the heavens, all of that which is on the earth and jamian and anything between them under your authority. All of it came into existence and the knowledges of awliya is that it all has also gone out of existence. We live within that fraction of a moment in which Allah brought it into existence and took it out of existence. All of that is called eternity for us. So it's outside of even our understanding but for us to understand it's only been written, this software has been written. What is it that you make yourself nervous about? Can you die any faster than Allah has written it for you? No. No matter how much the people from the matrix, you saw those guys with the dark sunglasses and they run around in the matrix, they're like bots in the software. The, the shaitan in a software, he is a, like a catalyst that when you introduce a catalyst into a video game it makes the person playing to run around more. So in a video game when they write a, a program it's actually like a screen, a box and they put a new skin on this engine but in the software they'll say that the person will enter into the room, they'll have to find five treasures but because we don't want him sitting in there all day long playing around looking for five treasures, we're going to introduce the wild card which is a devil, a demon, some sort of difficulty that enters into the room and starts coming after you so that you can quickly, quickly get your treasure and go to the next level. Shaitan plays the same role in this software. That Allah introduces shaitan into this software, don't take your time. Don't sit and waste your time, he's coming now, he's coming. Achieve what you had to achieve on your every day is a level of your software game. And if you think you're going to play this game over 50 years and go nowhere, Allah says, no, no, okay, introduce into his arena a shaitan now, a difficulty comes. That difficulty begins to enter into that arena to motivate the servant to achieve, to do something. So our whole life is an understanding that this is a software that's all been written. Either you're going to be reactive to every shaitanic movement within your game, your life is a game and every day is a, is a new scene in your video game. Either you always have to react to what shaitan has done to you and you play a reactive game because you're probably not a good player, you sit down and wait for the devil to come into the arena and begin to destroy everything in your game and everything in your life becomes reactive, reactive, reacting to the difficulty and to the problem. But when we accompany awliya who have mastered this game and Allah gave them a programming code. You know when they achieve the game and they do well in the game, Allah make them to be like programmers. They can come in and out of the game with a different coding. And what made them to be successful in the game is Allah bestowed upon them to be proactive. Don't wait for shaitan to come into your field, sit, do your awrah, do your zikrs, do your connection, make sure your connection is strong. The energy that you bring into your existence is a power that pushes away the internal devil and the internal devil is the one that is summonsing the external devil. For if you kill the internal devil, the external devil has no business with you. The two of them are magnets, right? What does the outside devil attract you to on a person? Is their inner devil and by means of their inner devil that shaitan, that difficulty, that nefarious jinn, whatever people are facing of difficulties because some people don't equate the talks into their own life. They say, my boss is bothering me, I don't know what you're talking about. That's exactly what we're talking about. The devil in that person and why he's directed to you 
is that he has a magnetic connection into your inner devil. He has a, a juzba to your shaitan. We'll take a moment to pause. Hmm. All right? So awliya say, why are you so worried about the outside devil when you're not facing the internal devil? Why are you preoccupied with everybody else and this one's bad, this one's wrong, this one this, that one this, this one that? For that one on the outside is magnetically attracted to your inner devil, has a juzba and a connection, magnetism. Instead of your magnetism with awliya, when you allow your inner devil and inner demon and inner fire and inner aggression, the inner difficulty it brings like an attraction all the outer difficulties. So you'll see that in the scenes in the matrix also, that all the fighting, all the fighting until you rise to be the one in which the one has a character and ikhlas, has a sincerity in their character that they spent their time not yelling and screaming and fighting people and being angry at everybody and everybody. It's not hard to identify everybody is wrong but to sit and say, no that I'm wrong and I have to identify my problems because these devils are attracted to my inner being that has to be clean. And that's how they were homing in on these problems. Every time the bots were appearing in their areas, they were appearing because they have an inner connection to an inner devil. So if anyone wants to sit and ponder to understand that, how shaitan keeps coming in every scenario that I walk. I go in, I go to the office and my boss is aggressive and angry with me. My teacher, students are bothering me. Everywhere I go there are these satanic energies. And if within me the satanic energy that I carry and I'm not fighting it and I'm not trying to destroy it, it has a satanic magnetism. It's like a magnet, it's the polar of what we talked about of madad and the connection with the shaykhs. So people are not doing their madad because the questions on a lot of the times are like they didn't get the book. So if you're not going to do the madad let me teach you about what the other side is that the inner devil has a magnetic pull and all his interest is, is that he agitates the character and as soon as you move he begins to turn on his juzba. And as a result every exterior devil and, and bad energy is being drawn to the servant because they say, I don't know where these things are coming from, is the inner core has to be cleaned. You have to shut off that inner magnet that's doing that because that's the one that is summonsing every type of difficulty. So then Prophet described, then what? This journey is an internal journey, who knows himself will know his Lord. Means whom journeys internally to find Allah does his hajj internally to find Allah fights and does his struggle and his jihad internally finds Allah's rida and satisfaction. For the one whom is victorious fighting himself, Allah grants that servant victory, why? Because once he fights his inner demons, inner characteristics, inner badness, what happens? When you slay and crush that magnet then Allah describes in Ayatul Kareem when shaitan said, I'm going after all your creation and Allah said, excuse me, no, you're not going after my mukhlas. You have right to everyone except the ones whom their inner devil has been destroyed. And Allah grants them the title of mukhlas. Not you grant yourself a title, I don't grant myself a title. The imam at the masjid doesn't grant people titles, Allah has to grant the title that this servant between us is mukhlas. And we described mukhlas before that they, they have a sincerity 
with all their senses. And the one whom Allah describes as mukhlas, He told shaitan that you have no access to him. His inner satanic magnet has been destroyed and keeps destroying and keeps bringing down because the awrads, the zikrs, the madad, the support, all of the practices that the servant is doing is keeping the internal shaitan's magnet off. As a result they become mukhlas, as a result the inner magnet is no longer calling outer devils and they're not accessing and able to access within his core. As a result they have to access from exterior and the amount of light and energy that the servant is emitting they rather not deal with it because they don't have an inner connection and an inner ability to enter into that person they'll go to the next creation. And that's why the one whom achieves their reality and achieves their proximity and nearness to Allah is as if a thousand men. So men are not the same, people are not the same. Those whom purify and cleanse themselves, cleanse themselves internally then they are far different than those whom are not taking a path of cleaning their internal reality and their abilities. So all of these things that are coming out in these days have an immense reality. And if we don't take a path to make the connection, to do the zikrs, to do the awrads, then we are allowing the inner devil to flourish. That's why then go back now to all of Prophet's teachings, we're all for that. What you eat is to destroy the inner devil. Muslims only kept the idea of halal, that's it. They can do many different things, they gamble, they drink, they go to Las Vegas but they say they eat halal. They have a whole bunch of criminals in the UK, all drug dealers driving all these things but they eat halal as if that was the only thing that's going to help you and save you. Prophet brought all of these for us to eat the halal, drink and breathe and know that shaitan is moving within our blood, within our being, within our practices, our zikrs, our connections, our madad, all of that energy was to come and to begin to burn the inner devil, destroy the inner demon so that the matrix begins to open for that servant. When the matrix opens for the servant then the concept of fear and faith can open. How can faith open for a servant that has fear? So this is a, a decoding in our reality, so hopefully somebody's writing it. How can you have faith if you have fear? So when the inner demon is inside of you, he is agitating your being, making you have was was, oh, oh, you're gonna die, you're gonna die, we'll go die tomorrow, you're gonna die, it's gonna happen like this. Of course he's breaking all your iman. So all of this teaching you'll find it in every hadith, you'll find throughout Qur'an this is all the reality. Because the light is not strong and the devil within is destroying any ability of faith. So how could they have, that's why then they identify like a doctor, oh, you have anger, you have qatab, you have all these complaints, you have all these characteristics, they can sense your inner devil is very strong. They can even see it on your face like, why are you looking at me like that? Look at the, the devil even taking over your facial expressions, it's so strong. So don't look like that. If your inner devil is there, do you think that inner devil is moving aside and say, please, Ahna wa sana, have some faith in your heart? No, he's actually destroying the heart, he resides within with a stick destroying everything within the heart. So that the servant is continuously nervous, fearful, has doubt of the future, has doubt of everything that's going to come and that is the opposite of iman. That's why, that's why it's not Allah just you know granting somebody faith, He's granting the understanding for you to decode and to break down the understanding of faith. When somebody says they have faith, then an imam in a mosque and talks and says, I'll have faith because I, I did Ramadan. No, that's not faith. Their medical office, these spiritualities are, are, are using Allah's high tech on somebody and they can break down and decode for you what this is. 
If you see the sign of qadab and anger, there's no way that person has faith. How could the devil inside allow that person to have true iman and true faith? That's why then in this teaching those whom have destroyed their inner demon and not that it doesn't spark, shaitans always are trying to spark but with their training they completely suffocate that reality, they isolate, they do their zikrs, they do their practices until Allah grants to them the title of mukhlis. The title of a mukhlis means that the inner devil has to be shut down. As a result of the shutdown of the inner devil their inner reality is flourishing because their inner soul becomes Jannah and paradise and there is no devil allowed in paradise. Devils try to enter but they don't reside within the soul of paradise. So they walk with the soul, nafsir radiyan with the mardiyan, the higher ones in which Allah is granted their soul, His rida and His happiness upon them. Means their souls are walking paradises. You think there's devils inside of that? As a result no devil is residing within their soul and they are like a behisht and a paradise. As a result they have faith from paradise. There's no Satan running within them to give them doubt. They act and walk based on iman because their soul is a flourishing paradise with its realities. And the khutbahs and teachings and isharat of paradises are directly being spoken into their soul and into their reality. And that's why these mukhlas when we talk about them having faith it's real faith. They don't have an inner demon trying to destroy every reality. Allah has shut down that magnet. As a result the external devils are fearful of them and try to block them and make obstacles. But they're teaching what real faith and real iman is. As a result through these difficult days their souls are like paradise. What they have to fear? Death. When they're already walking in the reality of that paradise. As soon as they look at death it's just another vision, it has nothing, has nothing upon them, no, no bind upon them, no fear upon them, no sickness is, is fearful, no difficulty and whatever they face from their paradise reality Allah make it to be bardan wa salam and cool and peaceful. Means that these realities of awakening and these realities of bringing true faith out Allah is bringing a catalyst into this dunya that what used to be able you know take a lifetime do whatever you want and see if you reach anywhere it's moving too fast now. Every day go in, every day come out, every day go in, you're going to die, you're going to be good, take this, shoot this, smoke this, take this pill, do this, do that, well, whatever they're trying to do. You have to understand, we have to understand Allah is putting a catalyst within this game at some point the servant wakes up and says, I'm going to build my inner reality, I'm going to build my inner connection, I'm going to fight my inner devil. That inner devil should not show its face and should not show its sound, nothing until it's destroyed and with all of the worshipness and with all of the support of the heavens to bring your soul to be its behisht and to be its paradise realities. We pray that Allah give us understanding and ears in which to hear and eyes in which to see Allah's magnificent and munificent realities that are shining everywhere. If we look with a heart that's clean we can see all the treasures that Allah bestowing upon this creation if they only try to achieve it. And that love of Sayyidina Muhammad is supreme, is the supreme love and the supreme authority to facilitate and to make all of that to be a reality. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Rasul al-Fatiha.